Welcome back. Mr. Sutton here bringing you the AB Calculus 4-4 Extra Practice Number 4 Solutions on Concavity. To analyze the concavity of this function, we're first going to take the second derivative. Even before we do that, though, we need a first derivative. And even before that, we can make our lives easier if we distribute this x cubed to get x to the fourth minus 4x cubed. So the first derivative of this, we've got 4x cubed minus 12x squared. And now taking another derivative, that's going to be 12x squared minus 24x. Setting this equal to 0 and solving for critical values, we can factor out a 12x, leaving us with just x minus 2. And then we see that x is either going to be 0 or 2 for critical values. So let's put those on an f double prime number line, 0 and 2. And let's see here, I'm going to use this factored version of f double prime to do my sign analysis. So testing out something to the left of 0, let's try negative 1. That gives me a negative times a negative, which is a positive. Between 0 and 2, we can use 1. That's going to be a positive times a negative, so negative overall. And after 2, we've got 3. That's going to be a positive times a positive, giving us a positive. So since I have a positive in the first and third intervals, that means that f is going to be concave up from negative infinity to 0 and also from 2 to positive infinity. And since f double prime is negative between 0 and 2, f is going to be concave down on that interval. On this problem, I'm trying to figure out concavity for 2 cosine of x just on the interval from negative to positive pi. So for that, I need to know the second derivative. First derivative is going to be negative 2 sine of x. And then second derivative is going to be negative 2 cosine of x. So we want to figure out critical values by setting this equal to 0. And uh, this is going to equal 0 wherever cosine of x itself equals 0, if you just divide by negative 2. Cosine is going to be 0 on the interval, again, from negative pi to pi, uh, anywhere you're on the y-axis. So at negative pi over 2, and also at positive pi over 2. All right, so let's put this on an f double prime number line. And I've got endpoints now at negative and positive pi. And then I have those critical values at negative pi over 2 and positive pi over 2. Testing something in each of these intervals, and be careful here, we are using this f double prime equals negative 2 cosine of x. This is what we have to use here. So between negative pi and negative pi over 2, that's going to be the third quadrant. So anything in the third quadrant really will do. Um, so that makes cosine negative normally because you're to the left of the y-axis. But we're already multiplying by a negative, so overall this is a positive result. Between negative and positive pi over 2, we can use 0. Cosine of 0 is 1 times negative 2 gives us a negative. And between pi over 2 and pi, that's quadrant 2. In quadrant 2, cosine is negative, but multiplying by a negative makes that positive. Because this function, the f double prime rather, is positive in the first and third intervals, that means that cosine or 2 cosine of x, f of x, is going to be concave up from negative pi to negative pi over 2, and also from pi over 2 to pi. And since f double prime is negative in between these two critical values, f is going to be concave down between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2. To figure out concavity for this function, I'm going to start by taking two derivatives, because I need the second derivative to analyze this. So first derivative... Using the power rule, this is, let's see, negative 1 half times 2. That's negative 1x. And then uh, derivative of negative x is negative 1. This fraction gets zeroed out completely. Now we need a second derivative. Second derivative is just going to be negative 1. So doing our sign analysis of f double prime, well, there isn't much analysis to do. If f double prime is a constant value of negative 1, that means f double prime is negative for all values of x, which means that we don't have concave, concave up anywhere, and we've got concave down everywhere from negative infinity to positive infinity. On this problem, we're given this f of x polynomial, and we want to know where it's concave up. So for that, we need to know where f double prime is positive. Let's find f double prime. f prime, which we need to know first, is going to be 12x squared minus 4x cubed, and then taking another derivative to get f double prime, we've got 24x minus 12x squared. 
Now let's uh, find critical values by setting this equal to zero and solving. I can factor out a 12x, leaving me with 2 minus x. And I see here that for critical values, I've got x equals 0 and positive 2. Putting those on an f double prime number line, so 0 and 2. I'm going to do some sign analysis. So something to the left of 0 I can plug in. Let's try negative 1. I'm going to use this factored version of f double prime here. And that should say f double prime up there. There we go. Now we know what we're talking about. Uh, so plugging that in, we've got a negative times a positive, because we're doing 2 minus a negative. So that overall is a negative result. Between 0 and 2, we can use 1. That's a positive times a positive, so positive. And after 2, we can use 3. That's a positive times 2 minus 3 is a negative, so negative overall. Since f double prime is positive between 0 and 2, therefore, f is concave up between 0 and 2. So that's going to be choice C. For this problem, we're given that g is a twice differentiable function with g prime and g double prime greater than zero and a couple values of g given to us. We want to know what are possible values for g of 6 between 20, 21, and 22. All right, so let's see what they've told us so far. g prime is positive. That means that g is an increasing function. Um, so if g of 5 is 18, then presumably g of 6 is something bigger than 18, which all these are. They also told us that g double prime is positive, that means g is concave up. Well, that means that since we're increasing, we're going to be increasing at an increasing rate. So it would be nice to know what the average rate of change was, at least, from 3 to 5. And then that might give us some insight on what the rate of change would have to be to get from 5 to 6. All right, well, let's find average rate of change. That's going to be 18 minus 12 over 5 minus 3. 3, there we go. Uh, so that's going to be 6 over 2, which itself is 3. So if, uh, our f, uh, if g of x were linear, then we would have to, to get the next term, since you're starting at 18 and, and then going one step to the right, you would be adding another 3 to get to x equals 6. So we would have 18 plus 3 would be g of 6 if this were a linear function. And that would be a value of 21. So 21 is the linear version of reality for g of 6. But now, since g is known to be concave up, that means that our rate of change is increasing. Um, so that means that we must be growing more than at a linear rate. So that means that g of 6 has to be bigger than the linear result, bigger than 21. Well, out of these three possibilities, the only one that's bigger than 21 is 22. So only 22, choice B, is a good answer here. For this problem, we've got this polynomial, and we want to know which statement about it's true. We're talking about increasing, decreasing. Um, so we need the first derivative for this thing, which is going to be 3x squared minus 12x plus 9. And let me uh, solve, set this equal to 0 and solve for critical values. So I can start by factoring out a 3. That's going to leave me with x squared minus 4x plus 3 equals 0. And then factoring this out, things that multiply to positive 3 and add up to negative 4, that would be x minus 1 and x minus 3. So we have critical values at 1 and 3. All right, uh, putting that on an f prime number line here, we've got some things to try out in each interval. Uh, before negative 1, let's try out 0. Plugging that into this factored version of f prime, that's going to be a negative times a negative, which is a positive. And then between 1 and 3, I've got 2. That gives me a positive times a negative, so negative overall. After 3, let's try 4. Those are both positive, so positive. Uh, so, all right, let's go through each of these now. Now, they're saying f is decreasing on the interval 0 to 1 because f prime is less on the interval from less than 0 on the interval from 0 to 1. Well, here's the interval from 0 to 1, and f prime is clearly positive on that interval, so that's false. Next, f is increasing on 0 to 1 because f prime is negative. Um, well, that's just false looking at it. I mean, forget that f prime is not negative down there. So C choice A, but yeah, you should be decreasing if you have a negative first derivative. Next, f is decreasing on 0 to 2 because f double prime is less than 0. Well, f double prime has nothing to do with whether f is increasing or decreasing. 
you could be increasing and be concave down at the same time. Um, so that's irrelevant. And then choice D, F is decreasing on 1 to 3, and those are actually critical values, because F prime is negative on that interval. That's actually correct. Um, so that one was false. This one is true. Choice D it is. For this problem, we're defining a curve as x squared plus y squared equals 36. And considering all the points where y is positive, which statement gives a justification for concavity on the curve? All right, so if we're talking concavity, we need the second derivative. Uh, let's start by getting the first derivative, which we can get by implicitly differentiating. So we'll have 2x plus 2y dy over dx, because y is an inner function of x in this scenario. And that's going to equal the derivative of 36, which is 0. And then isolating dy over dx, we can do that by subtracting 2x and dividing by 2y. That'll give us negative 2x over 2y, or just negative x over y. At this point, we have to find the second derivative. To do that, we need a quotient rule. So let me set up the box and ribbon to help with that. I'll use negative x and positive y whose derivatives are negative 1 and dy over dx. So multiplying that out with the ribbon, I've got u prime v, that's going to be negative y, minus uv prime, so that's going to be minus minus x dy over dx, so plus x dy over dx, all over v squared, so that's over y squared. And where do we go from here? Well, dy over dx, recall, is actually negative x over y. So we can plug that in. So that's a little sneaky algebraic move we can use. So this is going to give us a negative x squared over y. And then to get a little further on this, um, I'm going to try and simplify this as much as possible, honestly, before I even look at these answer choices. To get a little further, we need a common denominator of y. So this can become negative y squared minus x squared over y. And if I divide this fraction by this y squared down here, I'm really multiplying by 1 over y squared. So that's negative y squared minus x squared over y cubed. So a whole lot of algebra on this one. And finally, um, one thing I could do if I really wanted to is I could factor a negative out of the top to get negative 1 parentheses y squared plus x squared over y cubed. Now, if you're wondering where could you possibly go from here, there's one other sneaky little algebraic move we could use. So when we had a dy over dx, remember we looked back at what dy over dx actually equaled. Well, here we have a y squared plus x squared. Well, there's another place they actually told us what the value of x squared plus y squared was. In the beginning of the problem, the original equation was x squared plus y squared equals 36. So wherever I see an x squared plus y squared, I can replace it with 36. And now if we have a negative 36 over y cubed, well, what does that mean for the second derivative? Note, and this is the other important part in the problem, note that they said that y is greater than 0. They're guaranteeing that y is a positive number. If y is positive initially, cubing it keeps it positive. So you have a positive over a positive, but inside a negative fraction. So overall, this is going to be negative for all values of x and y that we're allowed to consider. Since this is less than 0, that means that this curve is always going to be concave down, at least on the intervals we're considering. So looking at our answer choices, we want to pick concave down because y double prime is negative 36 over y cubed, which is less than 0. Choice C.